All right, let's talk about Ghostwire Tokyo. So this game is coming to PC despite it being a PlayStation 5 exclusive on the console side of things. And this is confusing a lot of people, so I might actually jump into this real quick um, and then get into the actual system requirements and other details. So this is coming to PC on March 25th and PS5, just not Xbox consoles. And I know that's confusing because this is a Bethesda game and a lot of people know that Microsoft bought Bethesda, so why is this a PS5 exclusive? Well, they're honoring contracts that were made before they purchased Bethesda. So that's interesting. The big question mark that puts out for PC is will this come to Game Pass for PC on day one? It is a Bethesda title question mark. I actually don't know the answer to that. I tried to pull up some articles and nobody seemed to know for sure. Uh, they were speculating like here that it wouldn't be until it actually comes to the consoles that would come to PC uh, Game Pass, but that's just speculation. So, eh, question mark. Anyway, one reason why I'm also interested in this is, like I said, it's a PlayStation 5 exclusive. This is not coming to PS4. So I was interested in what the system requirements might look like for a game that's not taking older gen consoles into consideration. So let's take a look at the system requirements and they're actually not nearly as bad as I expected. Let me get my fat head out of your way. Ah, the magic of green screen. Also, I wanna point out that in this system requirement video, I'm even gonna bring up like, so what would it cost to buy some parts that would meet or beat this kind of, uh, system requirements. So stick around till the end of the video and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, the main things I notice here is first of all, this is one of the old school system requirements charts that honestly just kind of sucks. It gives you a minimum and a recommended. It doesn't tell you what resolution, frame rate, or graphic settings that that is targeting. A lot of developers are doing that nowadays. This one isn't, sorry. So anything about what these are actually mean in terms of your performance is gonna be kind of speculation, although I do have some speculation about that. Anyway, um, some of the most interesting things that pop up here to me is that the CPU requirements actually seem very low. I thought a PS5 game that didn't have to take into account the extremely weak PlayStation 4 and Xbox One CPUs might have higher CPU requirements. This one doesn't. The memory requirements seem fine for recommended, higher than usual for minimum with that 12 gigabyte requirement. Usually we see uh, eight gigabytes on the minimum these days, although we are starting to see a 12 pop in there and even a 16 occasionally in the minimum. So those of you on older systems with an eight gigabyte uh, system memory might be starting to see some issues and especially don't try to open up a Chrome tab or anything while you're playing this game. <laughs> Also, uh, SSD is recommended even at the minimum, and SSD is stated flat out for the recommendation. Although speaking of storage, the storage seems very low. It's only 20 gigabytes, which is really nice to see when a lot of games are requiring like 70 to 100 gigabytes these days. Those SSDs fill up pretty quick. Now, um, by the way, when I say that the CPU requirements here are pretty low, let me actually talk about those real quick just so you see what I mean. The i7-4770K, sure it's an i7, but it's an old one. This thing is from 2013, and it's only four core, eight thread. That's the minimum Intel. The recommended Intel is still only four core, eight thread, and it came out in 2015 and that is the i7-6700. So even the minimum and recommended Intel CPUs are four core, eight thread, and they're both pretty old, to be honest. Now, what's kind of weird on the CPU side of things is that the Ryzen 5 2600 is both the minimum and recommended AMD CPU. Now, it's also significantly better than the Intel GP, uh, CPUs that they're recommend, uh, recommending. Uh, with a six core 12 thread, you might be like, but the single core performance is better on Intel. Yes, in the equivalent year, at least back in these years, right? Zen 3 kind of changed that. But back then, yeah, that would have been the case, except that this is a 2018 chip. The 2018 chips from AMD did have better single core performance to my knowledge than a 2015 or 2013 Intel chip. So here's what I'm assuming this means. I'm assuming this means that the developers just didn't have a lot of AMD chips on hand to test. So they were able to verify that it works well on a Ryzen 5 2600. So they just listed that as their AMD CPU and they just didn't have old ones to test. I imagine that weaker ones would work assuming the developers are actually correct that these weak Intel CPUs do work. Anyway, 
So uh, next thing I want to jump into is the GPUs, which tends to be the most interesting thing. So we've got the minimum being the GTX 1060 or RX 5500 XT, and those do tend to actually line up pretty evenly performance-wise, so it's good to see that they actually make sense <laughs> on the ones that they're targeting there. And then the 1080 or RX 5600 XT uh, on the recommended. Now here's interesting, especially on the minimum. They are specifying six gigabytes or higher VRAM. Remember the GTX 1060 has, uh, and I believe even the 5500 XT have multiple VRAM configurations. The 1060 has like a three gigabyte model and they're specifically flat out saying that's not gonna do it here. Now, does that really mean you couldn't play the game on three gigabytes? We don't know until we benchmark that, but they're specifically flat out saying six gigabytes, so I would put that as a huge question mark if you don't have that. Same thing with the RX 5500 XT. I believe it had a four gigabyte and an eight gigabyte version, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. And so again, that four gigabyte version might be a big question mark. Although, I'm gonna throw this in, the recommended settings also just say six gigabyte. They're not saying like you need eight gigabyte for the recommended. So one option here is that the developers are just kind of lazy and this maybe you only need six gigabyte for the recommended and you could drop lower, although they are specifically listing that. So another thing that this could mean is that these system requirements might actually be targeting the same resolution and graphic settings, but at different frame rates. For example, if these are delivering, you know, in the like 40 FPS range, which developers would usually consider 30 FPS. Usually when we see system requirements list, it's like 30 FPS, 60 FPS, when in reality, you're somewhere in between, right? So your 30 FPS might be actually like a 40, 45 FPS on the GTX 1060, and then jumping up to the GTX 1080 gets you solid enough performance for 60 FPS. Now, if I'm right about that, it would line up with why they're not increasing the VRAM uh, budget there. Um, but again, I might be reading too much into just a lazy system requirements chart because uh, again, the frame rate increase at same settings would make that make sense. As you increase resolution and or graphic settings, you usually would also increase the VRAM budget required to, to, for the card to handle that. Anyway, so that's all the speculation I can give you is that maybe this is 1080p less than 60 FPS, and this might be 1080p 60 FPS at some kind of medium or high, maybe maxed out settings. I don't know. It w the minimum wouldn't really make sense to list using max settings, so... Uh, question mark. I don't know, guys. But I can tell you how your GPU lines up to these things, and then I can also help you figure out where, uh, you know, uh, what would it cost to buy uh, a system that could, uh, could do this, or to upgrade pieces of your system to this. Well, let's actually go back to the 1060 for a second, set that as the baseline in this relative performance chart, at tech power up. This is my preferred relative tech uh, performance chart for GPUs. Um, although it's not perfect and each game could favor a different architecture, there's all sorts of things. So the GTX 1060 does line up really well with the 5500 XT, which is great to see that their chart seems accurate about that. Now, if we scroll down the list and you're close, like on a GTX 970, you might be like, well, I'm probably fine. Yes, but the GTX 970 only had four gigabytes of VRAM and only 3.5 gigabytes of it was actually the full speed usable VRAM. So that's where that six gigabyte limit might start catching you on some of these other GPUs. So you can scroll backwards on this list and see where you might fall, like with the 1650 at 78% of the minimum, right? 1050 Ti is down here at 63% of the minimum. 960 is at 58% of the minimum, right? So we're scrolling back, 1050 is only half of the minimum. So not only are you falling way short of the minimum, but again, if you don't have that six gigabyte of VRAM limit, that could be a problem. Although maybe there's some low spec way of getting the game to run and you know run at 720p or something like that. Anyway, so do keep that in mind. Now, as we scroll up the list, you can see that we're beating those minimums. And you know that's where your 1660 is a bit better, 1660 Super and TI, your 1070 starting to have a healthy lead, getting into your 1070 TI. Now we're jumping into the GTX 1080, which has an almost 60% lead over the 1060. So again, we're seeing a 60% performance jump from the minimum to the recommended, which like I said, could explain jumping from like, you know, your 40, 45 uh, FPS up to 60 FPS at the same settings. 
um, that could explain that. But again, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that that's speculation. Anyway, um, now as you go past these, you could now, I'm assuming, jump up to like 1440p as you get a bit more of a performance advantage and then 4K. Obviously those increased resolutions will require the more powerful GPUs. Okay, so now what would it cost to actually upgrade some of your stuff or build this? Well, again, the game is wanting you to get an SSD. And if you don't have an SSD right now, guys, you can get a one terabyte SSD for less than hundred bucks these days. And if you don't have an SSD, honestly, your PC will just be night and day. Although do, do keep in mind, if you're on an older motherboard, you might not be able to get one of the M.2 chips because your motherboard might not support it if you're still on an old one, but you could get like a SATA 3 SSD as well. And, um, if you don't have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM these days, again, in upgrades, probably in the like 50 to $60 range. Like you can get this reasonable two by eight uh, DDR4 here. Now keep in mind, again, if you're on an older motherboard, you might actually still be on DDR3. Again, if you're on a system that old though, you might consider a full upgrade. Although I'll talk about the GPUs. So current GPU market is awful, especially if you wanna buy new and even the used market kind of sucks. An RX 6600 beats a GTX 1080 a lot of the time, although only by a little bit, which was the recommended GPU for this game. And they're almost constantly in stock now for about $460 on Newegg. And sure, that's way above the $329 MSRP, but it's not as bad of a jump compared to what a lot of the GPUs are like these days. And this, like I said, would actually beat the recommended GPU for this game. And if you wanna throw that in with a cheap case, a cheap power supply, I didn't research these a ton. I just pulled up cheap ones that had decent user reviews, four and five stars with a number of reviews on them. Uh, threw that in with you know the cheap uh, one terabyte SSD. There's cheaper ones out there, but this one looked pretty solid. Uh, threw that in again with a cheap but reasonable DDR4 3200CL16 memory kit and then grabbed a 12th gen Intel at the 12400 um, is great. You could even go down to a 12100, although I didn't see them in stock right now if you needed to save a bit of money on that. And it's surprisingly good for a four core uh, chip. Look up some reviews. Threw that in with a cheap B660, although cheap is you know in quotation marks, it's the cheapest one out there. And you can actually build a brand new system even in today's market for about $1,000 that would more than handle this game. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I can hear my kids waking up upstairs right now, so I'm gonna go deal with that. Have an excellent day. <laughs>